but who the convention center is named after. <laughs> Carl, I, uh, I think we found our perfect uh, in the Henry Convention Center. Let me ask you guys a quick question here. So we're working on a, a, a project to see, you know, people know what particular things were named after in San Jose. Can you guys tell us what the what the convention center was named after? Uh, Tom McHenry. That, that's actually right. Do you know who Tom McHenry was? Uh, I think he was an ex-mayor for San Jose. He did, actually. He did. Um, do, do, do you think he has a good reputation around San Jose? Well, he must if he has a yeah. convention center. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. I didn't expect that you would know who he was, but uh, thanks. Yeah, no problem. And then there's so many old timers here, uh, you know, for a lot 
of time we've been around uh, uh, the city for a while. Uh, you're, you're referred to as, like I, I was referred to for most of my life as John McHenry's boy, which is a, a nice point of reference. And uh, Father Wade's mother, right before my first election, uh, I was feeling a little bit nervous. She was at one of my fundraisers, uh, and you all know Jerry Wade. Right? She said, uh, how are you feeling? I said, oh, I'm a little nervous. I don't know who's going to vote for me. And she said, oh, don't worry, Tom. A lot of people are going to vote for you. A lot of them think you're your father. <laughs> <laughs> and then she followed real quick to again, a lot think you're your brother. <laughs> so thankfully they did. And uh, that election, the national word about, okay. Well, it, it's, uh, it's good to be home. It's good to be among the people who have done so much in San Jose. Um, some of the people who built San Jose were farmers, uh, some were teachers, some in public service, some holders of public opinion, uh, some were builders, and many, many were small business owners. Uh, we all know what they came to. They came to the most dynamic valley on the face of the earth, uh, a place where literally people here have changed the world. Computers and cell phones and text and GPS, how we find anything, how we communicate, social networks, Everything amazing, it seems, in the 20th century going into the 21st century really had so much of its beginning, so much of its emphasis here. I'm always amazed when uh, fools or pundits, they're sometimes interchangeable, talk about the inferiority complex we have in San Jose. I don't feel inferior. I don't know anybody in San Jose who does feel inferior. Quite to the contrary. I know people who have had extraordinary success here who have done amazing things, almost unbelievable things, and who believe that tomorrow is always going to be a little bit better day. I mean, what area can boast Hewlett and Packard and Wozniak and the Varian Brothers and Noyce and Moore and the Fairchildren and a little more currently, uh, Kozla and McNeely and the Empire John Price built and Ellison, Brim and Page. I mean, it, the litany goes on and on of people like you and people who have come here or we're fortunate enough, like a few of us, to be born here and have literally changed the world. But, you know, we, we all go back to, I think, a, a seminal point. Uh, we know the city was founded in 1777. There were people here before that. But uh, the real modern history of the city began in, in 1846, just a few blocks away from here, when Captain Fallon hoisted uh, uh, the American flag, uh, at the time I think uh, that we should all be proud of. Uh, Sorry, Captain Fallon, about the statue and the National Enquirer stuff, but I, I think you've weathered that okay. And, uh, like most people, what you did stands more importantly than uh, what individuals may think or write about you. You know, a little bit more in the current history. The flag was raised 163 years ago. Uh, 93 years ago, a group of, met, uh, of men met just about in the same place where the flag was raised, and they decided that San Jose ought to be run in a different way, in a nonpartisan way. They got rid of the old bosses in San Jose. Uh, a couple of those were related to me too. But they got rid of them and they decided that they would move the city forward in a strictly nonpartisan way. No Democrats, no Republicans. We tried to do things that would make everybody's life a little bit better. It was a very interesting, it was a very novel, it was a very successful concept. You know, that's, that's our history and it's important to remember that. And I think like many of you, I really enjoy history. History, as we really look at it, is about choices. Now, let, let's look at some of the ifs of history. You know, some of the best books and things are always the ifs of history. What would have happened if this battle was lost or won? Well, let me give you a few. What if uh, Valley Fair had not been built in the 50s? What if BART had been approved in the 60s? What if we were part of the link around the entire bay? Remember, one of the arguments against BART, interestingly and very provincially, was that it might pull people out of downtown San Jose. You know, that's a very big if of history. Let's move forward though. What if the arena had lost in 1988? It would have changed the city pretty considerably. What if the Giants had won in 1992? That also would have changed. We have to look at history, I think, not only looking at the ifs, but the what ifs, you know. What if we had the patience to wait for Santana Road to be built in downtown San Jose? We had the patience to wait for a fair bike. We had the patience to wait for an arena. 